Hello, thanks for clicking on the video and joining us today in our GYG video Bible class series called Anointed, Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Last week, we talked about how God has empowered us through His Holy Spirit. We're empowered by having an advocate who is with us forever. We know the Spirit gives us wisdom when discerning the will of God, whether it's in reading and understanding Scripture, or even in applying godly principles to our life on a daily basis. And the Spirit strengthens us in our inner being and allows us to comprehend the greatness and the fullness of the love of God. If you're a Christian, you have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Today, we're getting into Lesson 4, Your Where Matters, talking about how the Holy Spirit guides us and uses us in the situations we find ourselves in to glorify God and to grow closer to Him. Paul talks about understanding the plans and wisdom of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 16. If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to open up there and join and read and follow along as we go through it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 16. There Paul writes and he says, These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except for the Spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness, and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, in this passage, we see the truth that the Spirit helps us understand the deep things of God. He helps us to have what Paul calls the mind of Christ. This is not something tied to human wisdom and understanding, but is a connection to the deeper plan and will of God. This can be understanding why things are happening either now or after the fact. It makes me think of Joseph in the conversation he has with his brothers after his father passes away in Genesis chapter 50. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and join us and open up to Genesis 50, looking at verses 15 through 21. There we read, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph understood that after the fact, that each terrible event that he experienced in his life, whether that was being thrown into the pit by his brothers, being sold into slavery, being betrayed by his master, being thrown into prison, that each one of those events led him to being in the court in the presence of the Pharaoh and saving people during this great famine. You see, what he eventually says is God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The Spirit can also help us understand why we are where we are in the moment as well. This makes me think about the story of Esther and what Mordecai tells her. Open up to Esther chapter 4 and follow along in verses 12 through 14. There we see Mordecai reacting when he finds out about the plot against the Jewish people. He's tearing his clothes off. He's putting on a sackcloth. He's in great mourning for he doesn't know what's going to happen. And Esther is actually sending word to him trying to comfort him. But whenever he finally reacts to Esther, that's where we pick up in verse 12. There we read. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, 
Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. I love the boldness and the wisdom that Mordecai is showing in this passage. He understood two crucially important things. The first was that it was actually possible that the reason why Esther was selected as the next queen of the nation, the reason that she was brought into the king's court, and the reason she was in the position she found herself in, was possibly to help the Jewish people out of this difficult spot. But the second thing that Mordecai understood was that if Esther didn't step up, as he said, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. You see, Mordecai understood that God's will will be accomplished, regardless of our actions, or in the case of this story, possible inactions. But we need to understand today, we are possibly in the same position that Esther was, that we are where we are for a reason, and that we can make the most of it if we allow God to work through us to accomplish something great. But even if we don't, know that God's will will prevail. The idea of being where we should be in order to be used by God is not unique to the Old Testament. Jesus talked about how he needed to leave his apostles so that that would allow the Spirit to come and help them in John chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, open up to John 16 and let's read verses 7 through 15 together. There we read that specifically his disciples wouldn't be without God's guidance because even though he was leaving this world, he would leave the Spirit to help them to pick up on the mission where he left off. Let's open up to John chapter 16 and look at verses 7 through 15. Here Jesus says, But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, and he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. The apostles being blessed with the presence of Jesus probably were uneasy at the idea that he would be leaving. And so Jesus comforts them with the idea that while he might not be there anymore, he's sending a spirit to help them on their mission. That he's going to continue to instruct and continue to encourage and guide them in what they're doing. It's just that it would be through a new way, through the spirit himself. You see, they received the Holy Spirit to continue in their education and continue in their guidance and their mission and to give them comfort and companionship for the difficult mission that laid ahead of them. Know that God will make sure that his mission continues and that those who are seeking after him are found. It makes me think of the example of Philip in the Ethiopian eunuch and the idea that Philip was actually led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to talk to the Ethiopian eunuch. We see in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, that the Lord directed Philip to go when we read, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. You see, we see in that story that the Lord led Philip to this man who was searching him. Now, why do we know the Ethiopian eunuch was searching? Well, we know that he was in Jerusalem to worship. We know that he had purchased a scroll there and is reading and wants to know, uh, and it was from the scroll of Isaiah, wanting to know if the scroll he was reading was talking about the prophet or someone else. And this was the perfect opportunity to begin preaching Jesus to them. Now, what we see about Philip and his guidance by the Spirit, what we actually see later, after the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch, something happened. In Acts chapter 8, verses 39 and 40, we read, And when they came up out of the water, that's after the baptism of the eunuch, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. 
But Philip found himself in Azotus, and he, as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. From this passage, we see directly in that context that the Spirit directs people where they need to be. Now, maybe this doesn't happen as directly as it did to Philip in Acts chapter 8, but there's something that you can learn, a way that you can grow, or there's an opportunity to serve in your current spot in life. So we know the Spirit can give us understanding of past events, and He can give us perspective on what's going to happen and what we're going through in the moment, but we also have the idea that the Spirit helps train us for the moment as well. This is why you have Paul writing about the deeds of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 verses 16 through 25, where there we see what the Spirit produces in our lives when we allow Him to dwell in our hearts. Now, follow along as I read Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. There we read, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now how do we make sure to live the way that we ought to live? How do we make sure that we make the most of every situation we find ourselves in? Well, I think it's by walking by the Spirit. This means that we fight against gratifying the flesh and categorically switch what motivates us in life. You are where you are for a reason. And that reason might to be, and you are where you are for a reason. And that reason very well might be to cultivate a particular fruit of the Spirit in your life. Or you may be where you are in life to show a particular fruit of the Spirit and model it for someone else to learn and grow as well. When we do not know why something happened or why something is currently going on, we can rely on the Spirit to grow us and prepare us for whatever the future may hold. Because if we have these fruit and they're growing in our lives, we'll be able to tackle any of the challenges that life can throw at us. The Spirit helps us understand the deep things of God. That includes learning why we are where we are, either after the fact or during the process. God will make sure that his mission continues and that those who are seeking after him are found and you can be a part of that story. God wants you to be a part of it. But if you refuse, the Lord's will will be accomplished. You are where you are for a reason. And that reason might be to cultivate a particular fruit of the Spirit in your life, or it could be to model a fruit of the Spirit for other people. Thank you for joining us today in Lesson 4 from our new series, Anointed, Empowered by the Spirit. Be sure to check in with us next week as we get into Lesson 5, The Bigger Mission. You are incredibly special, and from the beginning of the foundations of the world, God wanted you to be His child. Know that I'm praying for you and your family. Know that I miss you. And know that I hope you have an awesome day.